Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and in this video, I wanted to quickly show you my specific method for setting up keyboard shortcuts for the most efficient, and for me, the fastest way to get my work done. So one of my previous videos was about just the overall importance of using keyboard shortcuts in your daily work. This one video is a bit more specific on how I set them up for maximum speed and efficiency. And I apply this method to any sort of software application I'm working in, whether it's Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, or any photo or video editing app, or Microsoft Excel, Apple Mail, or even a web browser, or even just the operating system as a whole. And I either learn the default keyboard shortcut for a program, or I modify them or create my own so that I can work more quickly. And basically my method comes down to remapping most of my keyboard shortcuts to be on the left side of my keyboard, so I can use them with just my left hand and making sure that they don't take my left hand away from the home row of keys too much. So my left hand is always at home on the A, S, D, and F keys. And I try not to stray too far from that home row. And I just assign different combinations of the function keys to get a different shortcut. So different combinations of the shift, control, option, and command keys or the alt key on Windows. And the reason I do this is that since I'm right-handed, my right hand needs to operate and move the mouse or be on the trackpad of my laptop a lot. And the more I have to move my right hand from the mouse to the keyboard, back to the mouse, back to the keyboard, just to press a keyboard shortcut that may be on the right side of my keyboard, that makes the entire keyboard shortcut process less efficient and just takes more time when I'm working and doing something in this position, moving the mouse around. Oh, I need to perform a keyboard shortcut, move my right hand over just to maybe press the equals key and then back to the mouse. It's not always efficient. And granted, this method is a little more helpful to me when I'm using an external keyboard like I am now. And because I like a full size keyboard with the number pad, because I usually use the number pad, those extra keys for the number pad, the arrow keys, all the home keys, they come in very handy for me. And so I like using a full size keyboard. But of course that does put more distance between my right hand and the main keys of the keyboard. So because of that distance on full-size keyboards, my method of keeping keyboard shortcuts contained primarily on the left side of my keyboard really works well, again, with those full-size keyboards, but also still works well when just using my laptop because I may be using the trackpad a lot and my right hand can mostly live on the trackpad while my left hand just stays on the keyboard and does all of those keyboard shortcuts. And honestly, that's pretty much it. I could end the video here and you're free to move on about your life, but I do wanna show you some examples of how I use this method and how it speeds up my workflow. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro where I have a bunch of custom keyboard shortcuts already set up. And I'm using Premiere Pro for this example because hey, I edit a lot of videos, so I thought it might be helpful. So first things first, you can see I don't actually have a new timeline and one of the very first keyboard shortcuts I use is I mapped Control Q to create a new sequence. SEQ, I figured Q for sequence. So I can highlight the uh, clip that I wanna make a new sequence out of and just hit Control Q and it pops it into a new timeline and I'm ready to start editing. So when I'm editing a video, often I'll want to add some text over the top of the main A roll to remind me to do something like insert some B roll over this spot. And what I do is I just position the playhead where I want it. And the playhead is at, let's say, this point in the timeline. And so the program monitor shows me what's going on. And let's say I wanna add a visual note here to remind me that I need to add B roll to cover up a hard cut or whatever the reason. Well, the way I do it is I add a quick layer of text over my face, for instance, and the text has a corresponding clip in the timeline that I'll color code so that I'll know that that color is where I need to insert B-roll during the edit. And of course, seeing the text over my face is also a major visual reminder that I need to replace this text later. So to do this, I've remapped the type tool in Premiere to shift T, which is one reason I really like Premiere, that specific type tool, since it's a selectable tool in the tool palette here in Premiere, you don't have to use the mouse and go over and drag and drop a graphic from the essential graphics window. You can just select the type tool. Again, I've assigned that to shift T. So I hit shift T and you can see right here that the tool is in highlighted and ready to use. This is a very overlooked feature, but one I use all the time in Premiere. And DaVinci Resolve doesn't have a quick way to do this. In Resolve, you have to use the mouse to go over and drag and drop a new text layer. That's a lot slower. This is a lot quicker for me. So I find my spot in the timeline, then I can just hit Shift T to make my cursor the type tool. Then I click once in the program window and that creates a new text box immediately in the program window. And with that single click, it also makes the cursor ready to type. So Shift T, 
click once in the program window, then just start typing. And you can press escape, which basically locks the text in place. Then I hit command four, which I've remapped to move focus to the timeline. Then I press control command E and that turns my text clip blue here in the timeline. So I know it's a placeholder for where I want B-roll. So here it is once again, more quickly. Let's say I'm editing. I want to put some B-roll in right there. I hit shift T, I click, I start typing. I hit escape, command four, control command E, and we're done that quick. Pick a point, shift T, click, type, escape, command four, control command E. It does it all in about five to 10 seconds, depending on what I want to type over my face. It's quick. And because I set up all the shortcuts over here on the left side of the keyboard, I can perform most of the keyboard shortcuts with my left hand while my right hand is making necessary movements over to the keyboard to type something out. So as my right hand is moving back over to the mouse, I can finish out those keyboard shortcuts, putting focus back on the timeline, turning the clip blue, all with my left hand while my right hand is making those movements. And it's very, very quick. And again, I usually try to minimize how much my right hand has to move off the mouse to do any of these keyboard shortcuts other than regular typing. Other small things, I have the Lumetri color panel mapped to option command C because you know, C for color. And I have that panel docked over on the far right side of my Premiere window. I have the audio mixer set up as shift one, which also sits in the upper left-hand corner where the effects controls were, but I can always still hit command one to get back to the effects controls. I have my scopes set up as shift S, S for scopes. And that also overtakes the upper left quadrant of Premiere. So the way I have Premiere set up, I can't see the audio mixer, the clip effect controls, and my scopes all at the same time in my personal workspace. But I often find I don't need to see those same three things at the same time. So this layout works for me. And again, I can quickly go between the mixer, the effect controls, and the scopes very quickly, all without having to move my left hand too much. I have the R and T keys set up as zoom out and in respectively because the default keyboard shortcuts for Premiere and most programs for zooming the timeline in and out are the minus and equals keys, which as you know, are way up here on the right side of my keyboard, a little bit out of reach of my normal left hand position. And we can see that here real quickly in Premiere on the timeline. If I hit equals, it zooms in. If I hit minus, it zooms out. So if I left it as the default of minus and equals for zoom in and out, simply zooming in and out of my timeline would require me to move my right hand over to the keyboard, or again, move my left hand off of the home row of keys and over here to the right side of the keyboard. But instead I'm able to just keep my left hand on the home row and just reach up and grab the R and T keys to zoom out and in. And I don't know, I grew up learning how to type the correct way with my index fingers on the F and J keys, respectively, of the home row. I actually found those without looking because as you know, the F and J keys typically have those little raised bumps on them so you can find them without looking at the keyboard. And I use them unconsciously daily all the time to get my fingers back to where they need to go. And I do this for almost every other program as well. Let's take Microsoft Excel, for example, because I used Excel quite a bit in my work. I find that often I'm needing to create a table very quickly in Excel and I need to highlight everything, add borders, and then maybe highlight the header in a gray color or maybe highlight yellow. So if we go to Excel here, I've got my selection of cells that I wanna call my table. I highlight everything. I hit my custom keyboard shortcut of command option B, which puts borders around every box in the selection. I then highlight my top row. I hit my other keyboard shortcut of command option G, which highlights the top row in gray. And let's say I wanted to type in item one, item two, and over here, I needed to make this cell yellow. I have that map to command option Y, and then it highlights it yellow. And if I didn't need those highlights, instead of having to select it and go up to the paint bucket and drop that down and hit no fill, I actually have no fill map to command option Z. So that takes the fill out of the cell and I don't have to constantly go up to the little bar here and find what I need to do. Just learn the keyboard shortcuts or make your own. Actually in Excel, they don't have the ability to remap everything. So I actually created custom macros for some of those keyboard shortcuts. You can see here that I've got highlight gray, highlight none and highlight yellow set up as macros because those weren't available in the regular keyboard shortcuts but I found a way to do it using macros. And I've got another video that I'll link to up there or down below showing some more examples using some different programs. 
And you know, I always want to try to learn the default keyboard shortcuts as well on these software programs because it means that if I have to use a different computer that's not mine, which happens a lot with my work in live event production, that I'm not stuck on that software program not knowing how to move around quickly. So learning the default ones, regardless of where they are on the keyboard, definitely helps you just become speedy if you have to jump on someone else's computer, let's say they're using Excel, you don't have to go hunting for the menu item. You can just quickly do the keyboard command. So very, very helpful in a number of ways, but I like remapping mine over to the left-hand side, if at all possible, to make my workflow quicker than yours. So yeah, this method works well for me, and I find that having to use the mouse too much for simple tasks that can be done with a quick click of some keys with my left hand, just lets me get any work done more quickly and efficiently. And there's not so much moving back and forth between the mouse and the keyboard, and it just makes everything quicker. So that's it. Give it a try, dig in there and remap those keyboard shortcuts, or at the very least, learn the default ones. And I really hope this has encouraged you to try this out for yourself so you can be more efficient. Trust me, you'll look like some sort of master computer hacker if you can move fast and get something done seemingly without moving your hands. Good luck. Let me know how it goes and please let me know if these types of videos are helpful. I think they are. I think everyone can be a little more efficient in their work. And I just thought I'd share my knowledge and my methods. So until next time, later.